Chris asks, what's the best way to share a Microsoft 365 calendar with people outside of the organization who use Gmail, et cetera? I created a shared mailbox with this calendar and added our internal employees with access, but now they want some outside people to be able to view and add to this calendar. Any recommendations? Well, it looks like you might have some ideas on there. I put a link uh, as a resource. You can publish a calendar to the web and make it, it basically gives it its own little URL, but I don't think That's you can, view. people can add or edit that. It's a view only thing. Right. Yeah, I, look, Microsoft focuses on the enterprise. This is my value add is that um, there, when you're talking about external users and access, I mean, there's a very robust set of third-party solutions that are out there because Microsoft has never answered this. I mean, much less. I mean, what there's, as we just discussed earlier, uh, there are so many calendaring questions that are out there, all valid. And I, I would charge Microsoft that uh, with the, you know, like they're looking at task management and they've hired somebody to look at task management across all these different products and workloads. They need to do the same thing with calendaring. Like there, there's a problem with calendars and, right. you know, in, in general, um, and, but, but there's especially a problem if you want to do anything with external users, it's like Microsoft yeah. just not built that way. But that's the same, it, you got the same problem because, uh, you know, my other life, uh, full-time job, um, they use G apps, right. And I'm going to be, I'm going to say this on this, on this podcast. Uh, you know, GF sucks, okay? Um, but I'm forced to use them. And I need to sync with Outlook and Calendar, specifically calendars. And GF sucks at it too. It's not just Microsoft. Yeah. Google sucks at it too. Uh, you know, it, it's like the two can't talk to each other. For some reason, they have this thing between them. It's kind of like a love-hate relationship. Where it's like, like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll see your calendar. No, I don't want. I'm not going to listen. I don't care about your calendar. Anymore. No, I'll let. Oh, go ahead. Give me some events. No, no, no. I don't want any more events. No, no. I'm, I'm just not going to accept them anymore. I'm done with you. You know, and that, that's how it seems because it'll work. It won't work. It'll work. It'll work for a little while. Nope, nope, nope. No, it's not working anymore. It's, it's a pain. It's a total pain. Yeah. Well, there is in Power Automate, and one of the connectors does say, you know, when I add something to this Outlook calendar, add it to the Google calendar, and it goes the other, the other direction. So you can keep two calendars in sync. So if they are Gmail users, for example, you could invite those Gmail users into a calendar and they could contribute. But I, one thing I'm curious about is like Power Pages. Because Power, Power Pages are intended intended to the external access, other access. external. Right. I'm wondering yeah. if, if that could be something that could be used if you published a calendar of power pages. I but don't, you'd I'm have the same problem. Loud. I mean, so think of like an event, like the last, like, you know, the MVP summit or ignite or one of these conferences where you could go and you can build your schedule. Then you can yeah. push your entire schedule over to your calendar. Now it's a dead link. It's not going back and forth, but it pushed it the, the one time. Like you just said it, Sherry, I mean, it almost needs to have a solution where every time there's a new item, so you've got a Google calendar and a Microsoft calendar that have that sync to know that every time there's something new, it pushes this way, something new pushes this way. And then there it's activity based. It's when something is created and then it automatically pushes to the other, other thing. Uh, you know, instead of like the manual process now is downloading like the uh, the ICS, ICS file yeah. and importing that in my calendar and doing that, automate that. Make it so that when it's created, approve the sync um, and and then automatically push that across. Like, I don't know why they don't do that. Um, I'll, I'll add another mix thing to the mix is that I have a real headache because all of our family calendars are done in uh, in the Apple calendar i cal mm, yeah so oh, now now i have i have outlook calendars i have work calendars in google and then i have my family calendars in i cal now try and get all those to sync okay yeah because i cal breaks if you try and sync it with anything it's yeah. like nope not touching nobody 
I'm iCal, I'm King, nobody can talk to me, you know, screw everybody else. Um, and then Google and Outlook are just sitting there going, oh, well, you know, we tried. Um, and yeah, it, it does me no, it does, it, you know, it, it totally frustrates me and I have no solution. Um, I've heard, I've heard this. I don't know that this is true, but um, something that guarantees that your Apple uh, calendars, uh, your Mac calendars are like work flawlessly is that you must be wearing a black <laughs> turtleneck and have <laughs> have at least two hundred thousand dollars in student debt. I think those two things it just knows and has pity on you and then works. Uh, Again, rumor, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> so I did find a knowledge article for syncing the Google and Outlook calendars with Power Automate. So I will add that to the awesome. as well. So depending on that, if you do that, what's the cost of that flow? Then mm. there's the question, right? Because every time it runs, there's some overhead. But you know, everything is a trade-off of time or money in my world. Yeah. And if it saves me a lot of manual time it. keeping two calendars up, then I'm going to pay that. But you know, the, uh, that's the way I look at things, but everybody's not always on that same wavelength. So I know that Microsoft is trying to bill everybody for everything now. And I just, I can see those, those flows just racking up because you can, pick, just, you can pick so many free flows now and yeah. people are just clicking on them, enable, click and enable, click and enable, and then they're running out of flows. I mean, they're, <laughs> they're running out of free flows. So. Uh, they just uh, Microsoft did not learn that lesson of uh, the 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 more you you monetize everything you make it then I realize that there's cost behind this and why they're doing that. The downside to that is that um, when you're charging people to use the solution, then they will find ways to not use your solution. You're penalizing people for using your technology. So. Um, yeah, look, no, it'd I almost think be something... better to raise the print licensing rates and just not do the pay per click things anymore. Yeah, huh. I, I, I think it's something that's going to evolve and change. Like, again, I get it. It's it's like the it, we were just talking about the co pilot stuff, and I think people are going to get sticker shock out yeah. of that, but oh, there's yeah. a cost to running those services, and yes. in the in the in for the cost of co pilot, I mean, it's very expensive for Microsoft to run that. So yeah. it's going to be an expensive service. Six million transactions an hour. Six million. That's what they're anticipating? Or that's, that's what, what they already that's have? What they're, they're already at. Six million transactions an hour. Wow. And it's not even yeah. live those out 10 there customers. yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, with those 10 customers. Yeah. <laughs> those are some busy customers, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs>